darling Fumi Nation, how are you? How are we? My name is Fumi Desaluvold. For those of you that are stopping by for the very first time, you guys are so very welcome indeed. Are we living and loving the hair, the beat, the fit? Let me get up and show you. I haven't worn pants in quite a while, so I'm kind of tickled pink because I've had these pants forever but i thought you know what why not and this is a lovely blouse that i got from zara my darling yes 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 and it's nice because it's got that little a line so you know you can just put your hands in your pockets and go about your business <laughs> i'll live for it all right my darlings this was such a, such a fascinating story and a lot of you sent me messages I don't know whether you heard about the four siblings that were in a plane crash in Colombia. And so they were stranded in the Amazon forest for 40 days. It was a little plane and their mother was on the plane, the pilot and another adult. The mother had four children, a 13 year old, a nine year old, a four year old and an 11 month old baby. And so the plane crashed. They were found so happy. They were found after 40 days. And so it was just so fascinating how these children were able to survive for 40 days. I've been fascinated with the story from the very, very beginning. Manuel Ranco, father of the two youngest children, told reporters outside the hospital on Sunday that the eldest of the four surviving children, the 13-year-old Leslie, told him that their mother was alive for four days after the plane crashed on the 1st of May in the Colombian jungle. He said before she died, it's most likely told them that they should leave the wreckage so that they could improve their chances of survival which is humongous to me because you can imagine the trauma, especially the 13 year old and the nine year old might have gone through. The four year old and of course the 11 month old would not really understand what was happening but the 13 year old saw her mother pass away in front of her eyes. Here we have a picture of the small aircraft that just fell off the radar after a very short time, authorities and family members have said the family survived, the four children that is, eating cassava flour and seeds, and that some familiarity with the rainforest fruits were also key to the survival. Kids are members of the Hitoto indigenous group. After being rescued on Friday, the children were transported in a helicopter to Bogota and then to a military hospital where the president, government, military officials, as well as family members met with the children on Saturday. An Air Force video released Friday showed a helicopter using lines to pull the youngsters up because it couldn't land in the dense rainforest where they were found. The military, of the military on Friday tweeted pictures showing the group of soldiers and volunteers posing with the children who were wrapped in thermal blankets. One of the soldiers held a bottle to the smallest child on the lips. Oh, wow. Wow. I can, I can, only, I can only imagine. Two weeks after the crash on the 16th of May, a search team found the plane in the thick patch of the rainforest and recovered the bodies of the three adults on board, but the small children were nowhere to be found. Soldiers on helicopters dropped boxes of food into the jungle, hoping that it would help sustain the children. Planes flying over the area fired flares to help search crews on the ground at night and rescuers used speakers that blasted a message recorded by the siblings' grandmother telling them to stay in one place. Colombia's army sent 150 soldiers with dogs in the area. Dozens of volunteers from the indigenous tribes also joined in search. Wow. We proved to the world that we found the plane, we found the children. It is a wonderful, wonderful story. And I'm so happy that they were found. And um, 
I was talking to Ula because of the indigenous group. They live on their own and they survive, you know, they have their own commune. So they're not really about the Western world. And I was asking Ula, but that's interesting because the helicopter, the plane, is part of the Western world. And he said, yes, yeah, that is true, but it's not like they're on TikTok, they're on Snapchat, the children don't do any of these things. And that the children are actually taught by the parents, the mother, how to look after the younger siblings, how to cook, and how to survive. And they survived because they are not really part of the Western world. And the cassava, which they ate, is very much like um, diam, the Nigerian food. It is a carbohydrate, and you can boil it, and you can dry it up, and you can make amala out of it. And if you have that and put a little bit of water, you can survive with that. The 13-year-old was really good because they found tree trunks to hide and sleep in. So they were protected from snakes and other animals. They had a lot of insect bites on them. They were malnourished, of course. But kudos to that beautiful young child, that 13-year-old that was able, that is a mother, is a mother to her three siblings, especially to the 11th month old, that that 11 month old survived. The, the crash had to have happened when the child maybe was 11 months and now is one year. It will change them forever, I think. And I think that they will forever have a bond. And um, I, I wanted to bring this topic up because different cultures, different ways of raising their children, our children, has to be respected. Because in this case, how this mother raised her daughter was paramount in how she was able to survive, to sustain, and take care of her children. There are many times when I see pictures of my home, my tribe, I'm from the Yoruba tribe, and we see our mothers carrying their children on their back. I did it with Adrian, my mother did it with me and her three children, because they've got to move around, work, and do what they gotta do. And in my head, I can just imagine how this little girl carried and tied her little brother on her back, looking for the safe fruit, and have one brother on each side. And they went through this dense forest after losing their mother, after surviving a crash. So, you know, it, you, you really have to admire the survival skills that I know children in New York would not have had because they just would not be trained that way. And I even do it with Adrian. I let Adrian walk ahead. And I tell Adrian, Adrian, what is your name? Adrian, how old are you? Adrian, where do you live? Adrian, is this your house? I show him how to lock, how to open the doors in case, God forbid, there's a fire, in case maybe I'm hurt, daddy is hurt. He has to act in order to get help. And so it's so important that we have safety gadgets, safety kits in the house, that they know what to do when they're at the airport. They know what to do when it is SOS. Because we live in a modern world and we rely on the phone. We rely on the phone for so many things and they're so good at using the phone. But when push comes to shove, do they know how to survive? Do they know how to cut and open a tree and squeeze out the juice and the water for them to survive? Because it's the three threes. You can do without three minutes of oxygen, three days without water, three weeks without food. And you have a baby, diaper change, breastfeeding, all of this. And she knew how to survive and take care of three other little ones at the age of 13. Because I hear some mothers are overwhelmed because they've got two children to take care of. This is a 13 year old girl who was put in a position where she had to take care of these children under horrific circumstances without anything and learn how to survive day and night and also take care of these children as well. She deserves, and, I, and I'm sure they will once they you know, become healthy, 
She deserves a badge of honor. She did the job. They survived one of the most horrific circumstances that I think anybody can say or, 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 or talk about. I am so happy for the father and may their mother rest in eternal peace that she lived for four days. I can only imagine what that must have been. But she was smart enough to take the cassava and take a container for water. And they set out to find help to survive for over a month, 40 days in the forest. No change of clothes. Oh. It brings me to tears and um, it shows that we have to respect different countries, different cultures and different ways that we raise our children and we have to teach our children how to survive. It's so important. Teach them how to swim. It's so important. And now that we are in summer, especially in Africa, if you have a swimming pool, please, please have a swimming pool cover. It is one of the, the number one deaths for children of four and younger. Make sure there's a swimming pool cover because children don't know any better. They don't. They will jump into the pool, and if they do not know how to swim, this is the perfect time. It's summer. The weather is warm. Teach them. Teach them how to take care of themselves, where the keys are for the house, where the torch light is. Let them know where there's an alarm, like a... Like a uh, I used to have it when I was in university. Um, what do you call it? It was like, a, it's, it's, it's like a horn. It's like a horn. And when you pull it, it's loud. It goes everywhere. And it alerts people to come and help you. Let them have that. And have talks with them. And show them this story. Because the children survived. So you ask them, what would they do in these circumstances? Because you never know. You never know. I wonder, perhaps the mother had taken this trip many a time with the baby because they don't have childcare, they don't have nanny. So if she has to go somewhere, the entire brood comes with her. Hence why she had the 11 month old. Thank God Almighty they survived. But it's something that we have to really take into account for those of us that have young children and we have teenagers, resources, how they can preserve, what they can use from a wreckage. We have to teach them this. It's always good for them to know because this is life and we really do not know. Don't forget to like, to subscribe, hit the notification button, my darlings, and I will see you what? I'll see you sooner than later. <laughs> All of my love. Thank <laughs> you.